meet my family. Yeah. Here's Jimmy, my oldest. Hey, Jimmy. James. And then Lawrence, oh. the father of my sons. Husband number one. What a great pleasure. I think it's very adult of you. Not everyone would have their ex-husband at their wedding. Love is in the air. This was love at first sight. I'm just a simple movie star. You've seen all of these films? Yeah. Seriously? Well, you know, nearly all. <laughs> you think I'm making a mistake? That's why I'm here. To make sure that this one is a keeper. You are so thoughtful. As if you'd have any idea what a keeper was. Uh, oh. Jimmy, you there? Sorry, what? Homemade chocolates? <laughs> They're in the shroom family. Mmm. <laughs> oh, hey. It's okay. Hey. Okay, that happened. <laughs> To Eve and Harold. Marriage puts a stop to life's pleasures, doesn't it? Sorry. Dad? On the scale of bad ideas... Oh, hi. Where do you think this one is? Tell me, am I giving you away for good this time? You deserve way, way better. I did not expect this weekend to pan out like this. Lauren's my sofa! It's just a teensy-weensy bit of spillage. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the stars of The Wild Wedding, Glenn Close, Peter Fastnelli, Grace Van Batten, and the writer-director, Damian Harris. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Thanks for having us. Of course, also joining us on stage, we have, what, Pip? Pip. Pip. Pip, uh -huh. yeah. who's really taking a liking to me. I, I, got, I, gotta say, I, I got Pip warmed up over here. Uh, Damien, talk to me. You, you wrote and directed this film. You said it's loosely inspired. Loosely based, based well, inspired on? by my mother's fourth wedding, yeah. By your mother's fourth wedding. So, so I've seen the film, and it's a wild wedding. It's a crazy wedding. I don't think the wedding in your life went that, that crazily. Not when my, the fourth wedding of my mother's. Yes. No, it didn't. But it was, it was kind of in, in, in sort of influenced by my mother and father's relationship. And um, what made you want to turn it into a screenplay? Uh, because I sort of watched them growing up and saw the kind of relationship they had. They had like a, not a good marriage, but a very good divorce. And that kind of sort of influenced me. And so I wanted to make a film about it. And now your, your, your father was an actor. And a, a lot of this film is about how actors fall in and out of love, how they deal with love and, and, and drama, if you will. Uh, you are playing a sort of uh, a starlet for a number of years. And starlet? Starlet. Is that the star. correct? Star. Star? <laughs> uh, an icon. Yeah. We won't get gender specific on what star. But uh, for a number of years, and uh, the sort of the breadwinner of, the, of a lot of the family, and it's your house, but you are also, in many ways, an actress, as they talk about. What did you bring to the role as an actress, as someone who's been around drama? Um, I brought to it that I'm actually an actress. <laughs> you just did the 42 job. 42 years in this business. So. Did you relate to uh, what it had to say about being an actor or an actress uh, in love and how? Yes, I think I think um, it, it's a tricky thing in our profession. I think. Um, it can be very hard to have really good, long-lasting relationships. And um, I think so in that way, I think it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, talk about your character and what attracted you to playing her. Well, I think what attracted me was the overall wonderful story. And uh, it's, I thought it was very, very funny and very kind of human and real. And I thought it was very cool to be in a romantic comedy at my age. And to, to be with Patrick and John, who I'd done different things with in a very, very different context. The last time you exciting. did anything with uh, John was Dangerous Liaisons, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so it's been quite some time. What was it like getting back together with him? Effortless. Yeah. You know, with kind of, we have a real history and we have a real friendship. And so I think that really added to our chemistry in the film. When you have such a history uh, with someone, when you get on set and you start doing scenes, do you have a shorthand all, that, that still exists from that last time? Oh, I think so. I think so. And I think it was really uh, kind of wonderful that in Dangerous Liaisons, we had a very contentious um, relationship. And, and, and yet, this is my dog and he's wandering around. Do you mind that? No, I love it. I okay. absolutely love it. <laughs> we just, we can't ignore it. 
I thought he'd just lie down, but he's just sniffing. I think, I think it's better that he's wandering around. I love it. He's pulling focus. <laughs> yeah. I just need one camera trained on the dog the whole time so we can cut away to it consistently. Yeah. No, the thing is that to, then to have this, this wonderful story where these two people have gone through really bad times together, but they have come out, as, as Damien said, real friends and people they can trust, two people that they can, uh, you know, they can trust each other, that really uh, played into you know, what John and I had done together before. Absolutely. And Grace, your uh, character is kind of the narrator of this film, our gateway to everything that we're seeing, and a sort of wise beyond her years, uh, world-weary 17-year-old, right? Yes. What was it like yeah. playing this character? It was super fun. And actually, when I read the script, it, it got me really excited because I recently found all these videos that I used to make when I was a lot younger than, than she is in the movie. But just the weirdest The character movies. in the film is... A, she's, yeah. yeah, she's filming um, the events leading up to the wedding and trying to capture her family's craziness. And um, I found all my old little videos of just, you know, putting the camera up to my parents' face and probably annoying... Did you find anything embarrassing? All of them were embarrassing. <laughs> they were insane. I think Mackenzie was, she was a little more, you know, she knew what she was doing a little more and she was taking it very seriously and, and, and took it very seriously and wanted to know what she was, you know, the information she was asking her family about love and because she does, I think she has a lot of interest in it and, and she thinks that uh, in that aspect, her family is very dysfunctional when it comes to love. Yeah. So. Uh, Peter, talk about your character. I think... Uh, one way to describe him would be horn dog, but <laughs> Un uncommitted. <laughs> uncommitted. <laughs> well, I look. He's the um, he's the son of of Glenn Close's character. Um, you know, he's the the wild child of the wild family. So that's a lot of fun to play when you have when you have material like that to play. It's uh, you know, I, it's hard for me because I'm not as cool as that character, so I had to dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> is it fun to play cooler than you you think you are? I'd imagine it's it's pretty fun. Yeah, I mean it's it's all on the page, so um, so then it becomes easier to to play. But I mean, what I was drawn besides working with with the immense talent and working with with Damien, um, you know, you had these multi generational family, and and you not only explore the dysfunctionality, but also the love that you have between these uh, all through life. It's like love. They, I think love is. Blind and hindsight is twenty twenty. So when you have like an older couple that's that's finding love again, or, or you know, she's kind of searching for what love means, and what better way to do that than look to the future and see this other couple who's come out the other side, and and to try to learn like, well, how do I how do I navigate through life and and find real love? And do you also, when you look at a generational screenplay like this, where you have parents and, and, and grandparents, do you look to how they're written to sort of how you might play your character too? Like what traits of these this generation has sort of been passed on to your character at all? I think for, the purpose of my character is to show the free love aspect of it, that he is a commitment phobe, so he hasn't quite found love yet. Um, he's still searching for it, but I think he's searching for it in... Very intimate spurts. He's his <laughs> father's there. child. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's I think that's kind of what I mean. And I feel like you're your granddaughter's grand, your grandmother's granddaughter in in many ways. Me, I don't. Mackenzie seems like a hopeless romantic to me, who's in love with her cousin, um, but first cousin once removed. Right, right. So it's okay, I guess. Um, <laughs> but she, I think. I imagine but I, writing that in the screenplay. First cousin, once, once, once removed. removed. Make, just yeah. make sure, yeah. <laughs> um, Nobody knows what that is, but it sounds good. <laughs> right, I don't have no idea still to this day. It but means you don't go to jail. Of love, you don't go to jail. It's not... It it's removes an ick factor, essentially, <laughs> is what we're talking about. Ish. Uh, David, when you, when you set out to write something that's, like you said, loosely inspired by, you know, your own family, how quick do you suddenly become... How suddenly do you start fictionalizing everything and, and growing the world as much as possible? And is it difficult to do that at first? Um, it's, once I, get, I, I got the context of what it was, then it's about the characters and, and, and sorting them all out of my mind about who they are and then just seeing how it'll develop. And I picked, my father was an actor, um, my stepfather was an actor, so it was quite easy to... to uh, brothers my, sorry, sorry, my, both my brothers are actors, 
they're going to kill me if they see this. Um, and so it was very easy for the, in that world to, to I, I know it very intimately. And my mother wasn't, so I, I know it from her point of view. Um, what is it about actors that you find um, fascinating? Is it the career itself and the sort of opportunities and the way that that shapes maybe a personality based off of the, the career itself and how freelance it kind of is? Or is there a certain personality that comes with wanting to be an actor that you're sort of innate, that's innate in you? Well, they're vastly entertaining for a start. That's what at least my, my father and my stepfather were. They're performers. Well, they just were very big. They were the Christmas trees with all the lights going on. And so to watch that was quite a... But, it, I, could, but I didn't take it that seriously, so I could see the other side of it, too. Um, and, and they had... They're a bit like pirates. I mean, they just go off into... The, they have their own lives. They have their own schedules. They ha you have to kind of understand that a relationship with something like that is not a normal relationship and not take... And not get affected by it. So... I knew that world. I thought it was a perfect uh, idea for for the combination of uh, Glenn and John to be actresses. Um, I could I could really deal with it. And then the idea of of that question of can you ever get back, and and what that's sort of what's asked in the film. Um, can you can it can you the relationship you've had? There's some there's a lot of strengths based on it. So once the problems or the pain's gone away, can the virtues um, still be sort of uh, of value? Clint, you said that uh, it's rare for you to be offered a romantic comedy uh, at, at this age, but I, I think I look back on your career, and I think it's unfortunately rare to see you off, be offered comedy because you're a wonderful comedic actress. I mean, you're a great actress all around, but I think you're known for intensity and drama, but I don't think people often recognize that a great dramatic actress can pull off comedy wonderfully. Do you, do you wish you had gotten to do a lot more comedy, or do you feel like you have gotten your fill over the course of oh, your career? I would love to do more comedy, yeah. yeah. Why do, you think, why do you think it is that uh, you haven't done maybe as much as you would have liked? Well, I did, I, I, I did a film that's coming out, I think, in December with uh, Owen Wilson and, and uh, Ed Helm, and that, that's oh, very the, much a comedy. The Bastards? Bastards, Bastards. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that was fun. So I'm, I'm always up for, for anything, and I just something that will kind of... Do you see a big difference in how you modulate your performances, whether it's comedy or drama or thriller? Not really, because I think everything is, everything is has, has to do with a, a sense of timing, you know, whether it's a drama or a comedy, and then how you reflect off your fellow actors. And if it's great writing, it's pretty innate, and you know, it's it's there. Is there? A, I'm going down a long path here. I'll pull back in a second, but I am I am curious. Is there a different sense of timing in drama versus comedy, or is it is the timing more considerate of the material and the what the scene is about? You guys can all answer Well, the that's, a, that's a really well. good question. I know you, you're probably something you can really talk about for a long time. But having just come from Sunset Boulevard, which was very dramatic, a, a live you know, show, that had you know, incredibly precise timing, having to do with the emotional, the emotional uh, connection you want to maintain with the audience. And I think comedy is exactly the same thing. You want to maintain an emotional connection so that when so that when you something funny does happen people are there to react to it uh, so I'm not sure if I could say what a huge difference is because it's about trying to keep that contact with the audience yeah there's just different um, elements of, of the timing I think you know every scene has its own rhythm kind of um, you want to stay open to, the, to you know working with the other actors but you can feel the rhythm of those scenes and when you're doing comedy, there's specific things that you know you're not trying to do, but there is the, the there's silence that helps that you know. But there's also silence in drama too. So um, both have the timing issues. It's just one is different. It's making sure that the like intentions of the scene land and and pauses and beats and timing can really sort of emphasize yes. those things. Yes, and you can, and keeping it grounded at the same time because I think comedy why they say it's so hard is because Comedy, if it's forced, is not funny. You know, if you're trying to be funny, it's not funny. And I think time is one thing, which you can get out in the mechanics. But I think also the decision of the tone, the tone of the scenes. Uh, of you know, are you are you playing it towards more uh, being uh, comedic, or is it something that's something maybe more emotional and more serious? Just so deciding on what the tone is. Grace, uh, what was it like for you getting the chance to be in this movie with this incredible cast of actors and actresses? It was. 
It was unreal. I mean, I remember reading reading their names on the script in the beginning and just being so excited by even the possibility of getting to work work with everyone. And when I got it, I was so excited and just being on set all the time, being able to hang out with them because we were shooting at this big house. We were all together all the time. Were you cool or did you do what I do right now, which is just beg for Beg them no, for no, information about cool. acting and the cool. history of acting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do I don't do? know. What do you do? How do you do this? What do you do? Um, but just get, being able to sit back and observe and observe what they do best and just be inspired by that. It was amazing. Damon, how did you go about assembling this in, incredible cast? It's one of the best ensemble casts I've seen in a movie in quite some time. Um, well, John, I, I've known for a long, long time. And I've done a movie with him before. And so he, we gave him the script. And he said yes, and then he suggested Glenn, and I think he approached Glenn about uh, doing it, and uh, she said yes. And then uh, Patrick I knew because I was going to do a film with him a while ago, so he said yes. And so once we had that, we had basically had our three, our three characters there, and we just said let's go for it. And I think Peter uh, had read the script and, and came to meet me and talk about it, and I auditioned Grace. And from actually the very first one, I said, that's, uh, that's, that's Mackenzie. How did you know? I just, you know, you just know something. I just saw the way she looked, the way she played the part. Um, didn't know all her lines, I think I remember. And what? Then, yeah, and so it was like, it was like... <laughs> he's, just, he's just out I, 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 I'm I did not, I was, that, I was not looking for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm astounded that you're expected to know lines for, for auditions because you're so nervous to begin with. How do you just not spend all but your time I trying need to remember to, like, I line. won't go in on audition if I don't feel like I have it memorized. Because then I just feel like... I, just, I never like memorized I when I had to, the days that I had really? to do auditions. No, you, you, you had a piece of paper. Nice. Well, I, there's reading and reading, but... Okay, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a reading, yeah. Uh, but I, I stop I, memorizing even when I'm working, so yeah. <laughs> I just stopped all together. Line. Line. Uh, where did the idea come from for uh, Patrick's? Uh, we're used to Patrick Stewart being bald, but yeah. this wonderful head of hair that he has. Well, the... we, we thought we kept wondering what the beach scene would be like if he was completely bald and John was completely bald, and, and, and therefore it wouldn't be much of a choice. But actually, Patrick called me and he said, "Look, I thought about it." He said, "The one thing I want to he said, uh, do is I want to wear a wig." because everybody knows me as being bald and I want this character to be different. And That was a wig? Yes. No. Oh, no. Oh, no, he, no, he shaves his head. Oh. I mean, that's naturally he has hair. Um, no, that's a lie. Oh. That, was, that was a joke and nobody picked it up. Um, he, so he no said, man makes that choice. No. <laughs> so he, he uh, had, we talked in the wig and he also, he said, I want to do a kind of up north Newcastle accent. And he had his ideas of what the character would be. And I was very, very happy. And the beard that he suggested. The wig it. is brilliant. Yeah. It's really funny to see Patrick Stewart in a wig like that. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Uh, you have a question right here. Yes. My question is for Glenn. You inspire so many people, and my question is, what inspires you? Pit. Nature. <laughs> nature really inspires me, um, going out into nature. Um, even, you know, uh, I think uh, my family inspires me, the love of my family, um, and it's great. I still get really inspired by a wonderful piece of writing, you know, that uh, I love reading, so I get inspired by regular books, um, but it's also very inspiring to me when you, when you are, you know, offered something that you feel is new territory, and I find that very inspirational, so... Um, yeah, I mean, the first thing that came into my head when you asked me that was a, a you know, a glorious sunset. <laughs> it's a little oh. too corny. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, next question. Hey, guys. Uh, it seems to me that you all had a really good time uh, filming this. I was just wondering if you guys had any, like, fun stories on set. The Scrabble games that we played, uh, Glenn is... You mean backgammon. Yeah, backgammon. Yeah, we played backgammon, and she's very competitive. So, and I, before I even would go to play, tell by the look on your face, yeah. you're competitive about like, it. Like she you're was just, I would be losing, and like, she'd just give me these <laughs> evil laughs while I was losing. Like ha 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 ha. She lo lo and I was like, before I even won, uh, before she even won, I knew I was gonna lose. Just staring across, you know, Glenn and rolling the dice. I was like, I've lost this game already. <laughs> I mean, really, it was a it was a very happy set. I mean, it was because it was in one environment. Everybody had relationships and got on together, 
And then we'd have a few scenes where it was like every, all, all the cast was there, all 24 people. And we, the crew would all be getting ready, and they'd all be talking amongst themselves. And I'd call action, and they'd just keep on talking amongst themselves. So I literally had to t- sh- slap my hands and go, we're actually filming. Can we start the scene? And then they go, oh, OK, begrudgingly. Oh, OK. Whose well, line is it? All right, what was nice, on. too, was we all kind of hung out in that house. So we didn't have trailers to go to. We weren't separated. There was a little room downstairs in the basement that we all kind of hung out with uh, each other. And, and we became a family when we were, when people weren't filming they were down hanging out with each other so it felt that's where the food was yeah <laughs> it <laughs> felt very much like a like a family it was nice uh, i want to go back to this backgammon competition for a second <laughs> uh, where did your your competitive backgammon side come from or are you just a competitive person naturally or is it only backgammon <laughs> <laughs> i think i probably am pretty competitive naturally um but backgammon has been in my family for generations. Right. And, you know, growing up, like, chance. if you could beat my dad, you were, you know, you were really happy. And, uh, and my mom, she told me once that you, she, I would know when she was on her way out because she wouldn't have the energy to pay backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really true, actually. The last time I saw her, we played three games of backgammon, and then she didn't have any more energy. But I knew that she was... You know, she was still there because she was enjoying it so much. Did you ever let her win? It what she would get doubles, 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 really? doubles, doubles. It would be maddening. She, she cheated a little bit. She was cheating. I don't think she cheated, but she, she really believed in her dice. She believed that you believe in your dice; they'll deliver for you. <laughs> uh, let's get a, one more question from the audience right here. You guys, uh, so I was wondering for uh, like any projects that you guys take on, how important is it to like know who's involved maybe the cast or or like the writer or director and uh before you take on the project i'll start i mean when i initially read a script and i fall in love with it i'm i'm in and and then finding out who's going to be in it is a whole other exciting part that's that's really um i'm always so curious to find out but in this i knew everyone who was going to be involved and it was amazing and it added a whole level of excitement just reading the script because you could picture those people in it but I guess it just depends on on whether you know before or after you read but it's all exciting I think for me it's um I mean every every project you do is a gamble and so it's all gambling it's like well, so what has the best chances of it, of success and for me it starts with the script and then it's like okay who's directing and then who's a part of it and who's producing because all of those elements actually do add up. I wish there was like a scoring point that I'd be like, one point for that, one point for that. But I just kind of, then at the end of the day, you also go with your gut. And there are times where you're like, okay, there's really nobody involved in this, but I have a good feeling about it. Or, you know, you, you want to play that character. So there's sometimes things that kind of add more weight and less. But if you have a movie like this with Damien at the helm and, and such a phenomenal cast and, and a great script, it's a good start, you know. Glenn? I, I think um, I'm always willing. I'm. I don't like to gamble on what I think is good writing, um, so I have to really like the script. Then I will gamble on um, one of two things: either the actor I'm going to work with or the director. And I knew John. I didn't know Damien, so I had a great script. I knew John, and John had been friends with this man and loved him for many years. So I thought, okay, I'll gamble on Damien, <laughs> and it was and it paid off. Uh, it was a chance for you to sort of get back together and work with John again and do some scenes yeah, with him, right? Yeah, yeah, which was great. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's it's great. It's a it's a wonderful movie. It opens this Friday, right? People yep. can see it in yep. theaters this Friday. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. The Wild Wedding, everybody, give it thank up. You. Thank you. Thanks for having us.